Um, there's our antitrust policy. You have been warned. <laughs> uh, thanks. So uh, on our agenda today, <clears throat> pardon me, we have uh, the EU Hackfest uh, update. Um, then I think we're ready for a vote on quilt, um, but we can have some brief discussion or longer if that's what's needed. But I didn't, didn't see anything on the mailing list. Um, <clears throat> and we have a proposal for chain code designer um, that I think I'd like to uh, at least just go through and have an overview presented um, and maybe some discussion. But we'll defer any vote for people to have time to uh, to think on it, and then we can uh, have an update from Tracy on project reporting. Is there any other topic that people would like to cover today? Hey, Chris. Sorry, my audio is still coming up. Could you repeat the first part of that? Um, where did you chime in? <laughs> Where you were saying something about uh, give people a chance to uh, catch up before a vote. Oh, um, yeah. So we have two uh, project proposals, quilts, which we've already um, discussed. And I didn't see any more uh, chatter on the mailing list. Um, so I think we're ready for a vote. We can have a brief discussion. And Chain Code Designer, which is new, <clears throat> That's the mailing list. I didn't see any discussion on the mailing list, but I think it also probably needs a little bit more time. And so I was saying that we would discuss it this week, but we would not vote. Thank you. I think there was just a little bit more discussion on the on the quilt stuff. So uh, I'm looking to see if all the updates are are there or not. Okay. So um, EU Hackfest, Todd. Uh, yeah, no update uh, today. Unfortunately, we are still um, moving forward with the planning on that, and we'll be in touch with registration details as soon as that's secured. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Any questions on the Hackfest? So maybe, Todd, if we could um, just remind people of the dates and everything so they're, they're planning as well. Yeah, still looking um, at uh, December 5th and 6th, um, but we'll... We'll send out final confirmation once that's locked in. Okay. All right. So next up is Quilt. And um, let's see if we can find the uh, proposal link. So my people. I, I just dropped that into chat. It looks like the oh. last edit was uh an hour ago or potentially some just got accepted in yeah i, th I think i think the proposal needs a rating as, as arnold pointed out i'm sorry jonathan could you say that again i didn't quite catch it sorry i'm saying i think that i, I wrote also on the chat I, th I think that the proposal needs updating as per arnold's email let's see uh, unless you think that we are ready to vote now, I think I think yeah. Let me check. Do oh, I didn't see from cool. I I didn't see our nose note. Let me just read it quickly. What's he? Do we have anyone from Colt on the line? Adrian or anyone? Hello. Uh, this is Michael. Rick, from... uh, okay. Sorry, yeah, Michael. I'm Michael from Ripple. Uh, I'm working more on the JavaScript uh, code, but I also uh, am in favor of the uh, the Quilt project. And uh, so Adrian is on a, another call at the moment. He couldn't make it. Hello. Uh, here from Everest, we are Juan Carlos and Enrique. Hello. Okay, so Arno, do you want to reiterate the concern you had this morning? Yeah, so essentially, I think there are a couple of things. I mean, last time we talked about it quite extensively, and I think it's not an easy situation with all the different uh, plays at work. 
in the different bodies that we talked about, Direct3C, IATF, JavaScript Foundation. But, you know, at the end of the day, as I said last time, I think it's workable. So I don't think there is much concern about the project itself, but the proposal as it is written is not very clear on what the scope is. And I think this needs to be clarified. And mainly it's a matter of, you know, is it really just about primarily implementing the interledger protocol, in which case, you know, it should just say that, or is it broader than that? Because the way it's worded, especially in the first paragraph, is, is kind of very broad scope of interoperability between, you know, ledgers. What? The, the main objective will be just to implement the protocol that basically means to interoper interoperability amongst layer, but just for the use case of value exchange, not just every type of smart contract. This is just a specialized protocol for payments, let's say, let's call, let's say that. Uh, it doesn't cover all the use cases of every smart contract. And the final objective will be just if uh, somebody wants to exchange assets from one layer to another layer. At this moment, I'm not aware of a uh, standard protocol to do that. So everyone has to create his own code, create his own protocol. And the final objective is just to have the uh, protocol uh, uh, making it compatible with the existing hyperledger layers. Just that is is uh, relatively close. In the objective is uh, sorry. Uh, I mean, uh, it's quite centered on a use case and on a single use case at this moment. I don't know if that's clear or you you need more explanation. So are, are oh, so built in, in, in the protocol, are there built-in uh, extension capability for, um, for us to add in additional assets transfer later on? Uh, uh, otherwise, yeah, it seems it, to me if that's the case, then, then the project would, should, should be narrowed to, to value transfer only and, and shouldn't be named as general as interledger protocol. Well, the case is that I think the, the confusion here it comes from the from the ledger. Uh, from our point of view, a ledger is just the classical ledger that uh, where you store balance and assets for different accounts. But uh, I, I observe you extended the term of ledger to something that can also uh, execute smart contracts. I'm wrong. So about I, that? I don't. I don't think what you're hearing is not so much complaint about that scoping, but that the proposal doesn't capture that scoping. That the proposal okay. comes across as a very broad general, let's do interoperability between all ledgers, but there's nothing in, but, but the reality and the response to the comments is, it's about payments, it's about an implementation of the interledger protocol, not about the connectors that are going to be necessary in each of the components. It's about, as you say, traditional ledgers and value transfer, not about kind of generic interoperability. And the proposal doesn't capture that specificity. Okay, I see. I see what you mean. I think maybe one, uh, I don't know about uh, uh, what the plan is for this project, but I do know the way we do it in, with the JavaScript project, which is at the JavaScript Foundation. Uh, we have an RFCs repo under Interledger, and that's generic independent from programming language. And then for JavaScript, we implement those uh, specifications. And if something's not clear about how it should work, then uh, that's outside the scope of this JavaScript Foundation project is just implementing uh, what the, the specs project uh, specified. Um, right. So, so, so what you know, I think you're hearing is that if we just say that, that this project is intended to be a Java implementation of this specification, 
nothing more and nothing less, I think then the people that you know you're hearing from would be much more comfortable because it's clearly scope. And you know, I mean, we could we can add in <clears throat> essentially the the essence that it's about an interledger protocol for exchange of value. Um, to, to even further clarify it, but by making the point that it's an implementation of that specification, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have, I have. Well, I don't know. Maybe three, three points, right? So I agree with me. Yeah, I think that's what we need to clarify. We need to, if we narrow the scope to payment, so even if we say something, and I'm not trying to oversimplify, but you're just talking about like a, a two-phase commit, right? So you have to prepare and the commit, and then we say separately we have connectors. So if you can just simplify that, and to just to be clear that. The protocol allows you to do that in a, let's say, in an accessible way. Uh, that will be easier for everybody to kind of relate to. Second thing is, what is it? If we have a spec that is already approved uh, with the JavaScript guys, what is there any is there any difference between that spec and our spec? Because I'm trying to understand the relationship between the JavaScript implementation and the Java implementation. So uh, can. Anyway, can you help me with that? So, uh, in principle, the the JavaScript intention and the Java implementation uh, will target the same the same use case, the same objectives. Yeah. So, basically, they must be uh, completely interoperable amongst each other. So, so you have one specification, right? That the JavaScript, the, the, the yes, the, that your specification yeah. is the request for comment, the RFC. The, the RFC. Sure. Yes. yes. So that's going to be well, we're going to do exactly the same thing, just in Java. Yes. Okay. All right. So maybe we should. I don't know if it's written like that. So maybe that will be helpful as well. So okay. I saw I saw the reference. Yeah. To to the. Intelligent Payment Community Group. Right. So here's here's what I would recommend. Um, well, first let me ask this: Are there any other remaining concerns other than the scope discussion we just had? Uh, is there enough diversity in the developer um, uh, proposed maintainers uh, kind of list? Is I think perhaps something else for the TSC to to just ask and see if there's more that that could be done to recruit potentially more more volunteers so I see three Sir. three vendors represented in the list of committers so uh, it's real who else uh, one second and Ripple, it's NTT data, right? Um, in the form of Everest. Uh, or, or are those? Are you counting those as two separate ones? There's also applied payments at the bottom, but it's a uh, dependent on availability. But I mean, you know, realistically, we've started projects with fewer <laughs> initial <laughs> committers. Oh. I, Again, this is incubation, not not graduation. I think on graduation we would expect a uh, higher degree of diversity, uh, diversity. But um. yeah, I, I'm satisfied with that. I'd I'd ask Adrian. Uh, so, any other any other concerns? Help clarify the the commitments there another point on the scope discussion yeah um, I don't feel that it's you know if if we're just listing or if you're just listing uh, hyperledger framework integration because that feels like a, a gate that you would need to clear to get into hyperledger I would discourage you from doing that um, you know if, if the main mission is really just to connect existing payment networks, then, then I would again try to be more precise about that. Yeah, right. And I wonder if we're getting hung up on payments too, because I think you know, 
in most ledgers, not, not all of them necessarily, but in most, you're going to have a digital asset of some sort, you know, uh, a land title, <laughs> um, uh, you know, a, a carbon emission credit. And payment is really just a transfer of one kind of asset to another. And the assets are always going to be locally defined to each ledger. So I'd encourage people to think, don't think of this as like a bank transferring a payment to another bank or from Bitcoin to Ethereum or something like just limited in that. I think it's uh, it's perhaps not so broad as to say it's all types of interactions between ledgers, but it, it's payments of digital tokens or digital assets of all sorts. Seems to me at least, unless I mis misread or misunderstand it. Yeah, so so here's what I would recommend. Um, that we send this back to Adrian and request uh, clarification and um, being a little bit more prescriptive as we've discussed about the scope that this is about implementing RFC, whatever it is, um, uh, nothing more, nothing less, and removing the language that sort of hand wavy tries to describe interoperability between all the, the hyperledger projects. And I think we're, uh, I think we're ready to vote, and then we could do an email vote once the, the document has been uh, updated according to mm -hmm. those changes. Everybody agree with that? Anybody disagree with that? Okay, I'm not hearing anything. So I think Todd, we have an approach. Um, I will send a, a note, um, sort of writing that up uh, after, just after this call, and um, and then uh, once Adrian gets back and says they've updated the the proposal, Todd, we can send a vote out. Great, sounds good. Okay. I'm just getting a question from Adrian on the chat. He is asking why should the scope specify the language? Is that can that be left open? Uh, the language is Java, I thought. Yeah, but the yeah. Java mm -hmm. I mean, it, look, if 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 we can move JavaScript project over from the JS Foundation to this one by Brian going over and talking to Chris, I'm okay with that. Um, you know, to have them, you know, side by side as they're implementing the JavaScript and the Java implementations. I don't have a problem with that. But yeah, I, think, I, I think the question would be from a from a developer community perspective. You know, with this project, if somebody said, "Hey, we want to do an implementation in Rust or in Go, right? Uh, so it could run natively inside Fabric or or in Python." Would that those efforts be you know done inside the Quilt project as separate code bases with separate release streams or something like that? Uh, or would Quilt be specifically about the Java implementation of Venture Ledger? My recommendation is, yeah, leave it leave it open um, and allow for the developers to tell us what they what they prefer in terms of granularity. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with that actually. Yeah, just like we do with the SDKs, right? Yeah, it's very similar. So we're, we're given an API, an interface, and then people can implement. Yeah. yeah I mean, if one thing, if if Hyperledger were you know all about you know just Python or but we're not clearly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, the only concern, maybe it's a side comment, right? Is the JavaScript implementation more mature or less mature or equivalent? Like, I just feel that if you're going to do everything but the JavaScript, I'll feel bad that we are like behind. We can catch up, but at this moment, the more mature is the JavaScript. Is the reference implementation? Let's call it. Yes. Okay. No, I, yeah, I, don't, I agree. I don't think we should limit ourselves to a language. If, if, if you prefer to have something more generic and talk about in, an implementation of an RFC, yeah, that's, that's fine with me, Jonathan. All right. So I'll send that note, and, um, and then we can vote when, uh, after Adrian is, has updated. So thanks, guys. Um, let's move on to the chain code designer proposal. And I think we have... Um, we have Bei Wang on, is that right? I think I saw him pop into the video for a second. Um, Bei Wang is not muted, so are, are you there, Bei?
Hey, can you talk? <laughs> Bawa, can you um, send a WeChat to him or something? I don't know if he's maybe just sort of walked away from his, um, oh, he can hear us. We can't hear him. Maybe you're muted. Oh, it says you're not muted, but maybe you're. Yeah, muted. yeah. Maybe you're staying with the mic. Can you talk, <laughs> Bei Wang? We cannot hear you. Double mute. Yeah, I suspect that's what's going on. Oh, maybe he's dialing in. Strikes again. I think he's dialing in again. Yeah. Uh, I just saw. Maybe we can move to the next item first. Yeah, let's. I think that's fine. I, I did see him just pop in, so I'll just give him one more second. But I don't see him on. Um. Okay. Um, well, I guess we'll move on. So, Tracy, thank you for reporting. Get that in until uh, Bay Wang gets connected again. Okay, so my uh, internet is also not very good, so hopefully you can hear me. With the project reporting, there was two comments that came back on the mailing list. Um, one was from Brian to do a rolling schedule for project reporting. So we talked about doing project reporting every three months, um, but uh, Brian suggested that if we did a rolling schedule, then we could make sure that we were uh, pretty much constantly reviewing the. Uh, the projects as they came in, we could decide on, you know, maybe the first meeting of the month or something uh, to do the, the review so that we're not like reviewing every week. Um, oh. I actually took it the other way, thinking we'd have rolling reviews so we wouldn't be doing them every week. I mean, we wouldn't be having to cram and review a bunch of things before the meeting. Um, I had intended it to mean like, you know, the uh, city heartbeat once every other meeting or every third meeting, we'd have one report to review, discuss and approve um, right. that way, rather than having eight uh, once a year or eight once a quarter. Like right, that. exactly. Yeah, so I, I was thinking the same thing, Brian, that we would spread them out. And so okay, that's what I had. That's what I had intended to say. Uh, if it didn't come across that way. Um, I'm sorry for that. Uh, so yeah. Um, and then the other comment is the, the one that you had, Chris, around um, the date maintainers last at it. Uh, it seems like maybe you would instead let like to just report on who the maintainers are and uh, what their diversity is. Um, and those were the only two comments that we had on the project reporting uh, from the last email discussion that went on. Yeah, I mean, my concern is that the churn of maintainers isn't necessarily um, a good sign. Um, uh, and so I think, you know, it's fine to sort of report, but I wouldn't necessarily use it as a yardstick. Um, uh, I, I, I would think that there should be at some point certain amount of stability and then periodic, you know, there would be a, a little bit of turnover in the maintainership. But um, at some point you reach a, a sort of a steady state. And but then people, you know, they change jobs or they decide they want to go off and do something else or um, they decide that they don't have enough time to do reviews anymore, that kind of thing. Um, and so periodically you start having turnover and then, yeah, sure, you, you expand the project and 
uh, you know, there's new areas of the code to be covered and so forth, and you might add a maintainer uh, or three. But um, uh, again, I don't necessarily think that, you know, looking for um, new maintainers is necessarily uh, a good thing, but the diversity is definitely something that we should be looking at. And if it's persistently low, then obviously we can have a conversation about that. Um, if it remains a pretty high percentage of diversity, then um, I think that's a good thing. I think I think it's easy to report. You know, um, new maintainers added since the last report, right? Just report it as a bare fact, just to to see. As a, as a it, it doesn't necessarily have to point to churn. I think uh, um, I think just knowing a project's alive and paying attention to the flow of new developers in is, is a useful thing. It doesn't have to be a date last added. You can just say, hey, this quarter we added, you know, this maintainer, Bob, he's great. Um, and then uh, on the diversity metric, <laughs> um, that might be harder for projects to self-report on until we get to tooling that might make that easier. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think if it's, as long as it's easy for any project for, for the board to look at and drill in and see, um, you know, is it is it really one person kind of running the show, or is it multiple? Um, then I think we'll be in a better spot. Um, well, uh, diversity uh, of maintainers is pretty straightforward to measure because it's a small set, typically. I mean, you know, a dozen or less. Um, you mean of like employers or or ethnic and gender or all of those. I agree. I mean, measuring the diversity of contribution is a little bit harder because not everybody uses their corporate email. Um, and so there's a certain amount of email mapping that's going to have to go on to try and track down and figure out, you know, the diversity of contribution from the community generally. But maintainership, I think, should be fairly straightforward. Anyway, so, okay, I think then we're, I think we're good then with Tracy's proposal. And um, so Tracy, what, what's the next step? Are we going to have like a template on the wiki that we can? Yes, definitely. Chris. So, so what I'll do is I will um, change that to basically new maintainers at it since the last report just to address the um, the the comment that you had chris and then i will uh, make sure that gets uploaded as a template such that when somebody creates a new um, page in that particular location it will pull from the template and then they just have to fill in the details um, and then the other piece of it is really just uh, the rolling schedule right defining what that rolling schedule is um, which i'm happy to put out something as a, a straw man for people to review my thinking is like just pick alphabetically and go from there. Or you could just put names in a hat and draw them randomly or whatever. I could do that too. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, everybody's going to name their projects. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Tracy. Now, is uh, Bei Wang on? Okay. Uh, I guess we'll have to defer this. So Chris, um, do we need... Oh, go ahead, Tracy. Sorry, Chris, do we need to do we need to uh, um, vote on this proposal or anything, or is it just like let's go? Okay, let's have a vote. All right. Uh, we can. Is there a link to the final version of this proposal then? The template. That's the only thing that's in the proposal. We're just voting on the template, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. With with the one that modification was... of changing the uh, date right. maintainer last added to new maintainers added since last report. And the link the link to the template down is in the agenda email. And the chat. 
Thanks. Somebody just, oh yeah, Todd just put it in the chat. All right, Todd, you wanna go around the room? Sure, uh, Arno. Arno, are you there? We'll come back to him. Uh, Bahua. No, I, I I guess I need more review. Uh, Chris, do you want to give people a minute to have a look through or continue with the vote or? Well, when you said you need more time, you need more like five minutes or uh, another week? I guess another week. Anybody else in that same position? Um, okay. Um, well, I, I just didn't want to necessarily delay this much further. Um, okay, Bawa, if you know, if if you, if you need more time, I think we can we can work on that. And I guess yeah, I, maybe maybe we can go with uh, email wood. Okay. So Tracy, why don't we update the, thank you, uh, why don't we update the template and then um, uh, Todd can send out a, a, an email vote. Sounds great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bawa. Okay, um, and Baywa, uh, Bay Wong rather is still not on, I think. See him with the green now. Um... Audio. Yeah, I, I do too, but I we can't hear him, so I don't know if he's got a problem with his audio or um, or what. We have to try this again next week. What I did think we could do, though, since we have time, um, is maybe just a quick recap of the uh, the Hack Fest uh, for s some of us who uh, weren't present, and uh, you know we can just sort of go around the room and invite people to sort of reflect on their experience and whether they thought it was uh, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, I personally thought that it was um, certainly a little bit more engaging from a hands-on keyboards perspective. It wasn't quite as much hacking over yakking as I might have uh, envisaged, but it was, it was still, uh, I think, a, a good improvement. And I think a lot of people would, had an opportunity to sort of do a li at least a little bit of hacking or um, ex you know exploring of other projects, um, uh, which I think is you know it's 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 a step in the right direction of where I think we need to be you know trying to do more of of you know uh, exploring the other capabilities and the and the adjacent projects and 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 thinking about areas of opportunity for either. Um, integration or in interoperability or certainly of sharing of ideas um, uh, uh, across projects I think is a is a good thing and I think we had um, some good discussions on indie on sawtooth on composer um, and uh, and on composability just generally um, Jonathan I think led a, a nice discussion on that so I I was very pleased uh, I wish I didn't have to leave so early in the afternoon on Friday, but that was the only flight I could get. So. I don't know if yeah, anybody. So, yeah, so, me? yeah, just my, one of the version. I think it's funny, right? We want to have people hacking and getting kind of uh, getting, getting, getting dirty with the code and committing, but, you know, and we had these sessions, but I think it's also, it's because Hyperledger is kind of positioning itself as a, Kind of blockchain for business or enterprise kind of grade implementations and and i think it's it's good that we also see business people coming in like the discussions that i had with many people they're like integrators many of them used to work in very large kind of um, advisory boards you know like a kpm i met like a few people from really different different kind of uh sides of the spectrums and they're like just trying to see okay i'm trying to see what can i do with hyperledger what are the projects? Just to get a, a high level, because I have a lot of people that are technical, I'm trying to understand how can I propose it. 
So it, it was kind of, it, it's a, it was a lot more interesting to me to see this kind of discussions. Uh, it's, it's more extended than what we have in San Francisco. In San Francisco, usually we talk about roadmaps, you know, it is historically, right? The two items that we had, and, and people are trying to kind of get, get, get to see how many bugs are left. Here people are trying to see, okay, where, where, where are we going? Where is Hyperledger going to be in like three months time, six months time? I think it was very refreshing to see it. Uh, yeah. I, I like that hackathon. Yeah. I think it was a good event. Dan or Mick or Arno or Nate. Um, this yeah, this is Nathan. Dan. Um, I thought. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah. Well, I guess one of the things, since since Nathan was about to talk, that I found it a good opportunity to get to sit down with with uh, Nathan and crew there to start to get up on on Indy. Uh, I would have liked even more time to have hands on keyboard. Um, you know, it's definitely a a balance to strike where it felt always that there was a need for the 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 audience that that was there to learn very you know one on one stuff about hyperledger that it felt like we we needed to have agenda and presentations up to talk at them from the lectern uh, so it would be good for the next one to think more about how we can balance that effectively so that we could continue to put more emphasis on on the hands on keyboard time one of my other takeaways was was kind of like uh, Jonathan was saying that it was good to hear the perspectives from Chicago. I didn't have insight into uh, a variety of things that seemed to be going on there with respect to blockchain. So continuing to move these around to different cities, different regions, different parts of the world, I think, uh, will be informative for us as a community. So just one just one observation on that that um, I know both for both of the um, Indy and Sawtooth, um, uh, having a little infrastructure that could do a, um, kind of local cache of the files would have made life a lot easier for a lot of people or a lot of us were sort of sitting around waiting for downloads to finish. Um, so, so infrastructure wise, if we're going to do that kind of, kind of mass download with 30 people chunking down hundred megabyte files, um, it might be good to make sure that we've got the infrastructure to do it. Either that, or have people come prepared with thumb drives, or or, or pre, yeah, or have some instructions sent out ahead of time to preload some of that stuff. That'd be good. Yeah. That's that's a good point, Nick. Thanks, Nate. Um, I think I'm just going to echo some of the same comments that Dan and Mick said. Um, I was caught a little bit by surprise, but how, by how much talking people wanted to have. Um, I came prepared to kind of do some hacking on some of the specifications and try to get some interoperability code um, going. Um, so I ended up spending a lot of time talking and not as much time um, coding up some things. But I think, um, like Jonathan said, that was kind of just the natural consequence of who attended and what they wanted to do. Um, and then having some more infrastructure, like Mick said, for setting up some of those things and also maybe some advanced war warning about you know what kinds of tutorials we wanted to do before the hackfest started would have helped us be a little bit more prepared to have kind of some thumb drives or whatever else was required in order to make sure we had um, the ability to bypass you know network bottlenecks or what have you so um, I think it went really well I think there was a, a lot of really good discussion I especially like kind of the interoperability um, roundtable discussion we had early on I think it was Friday um, where everyone kind of got to just talk about what interoperability they were hoping for. I think some of those discussions were really productive. Yep. Thanks, Nate. Anyone Was else? any of that captured? Uh, yes. What do you mean, Vivian? Oh, interoperability. interoperability discussions about interoperability, for example, where a lot of interesting points came up. Um, did they get captured in some way that you can actually go back and say, you know, we hit some of these points or we did not. Because I remember that uh, in the early days of the identity working group, we did, uh, you know, like for example, in um, JP Morgan uh, in Brooklyn, uh, we wrote down a lot of things that seemed to be coming back over time. 
So it would be interesting if uh, at least some of the salient points were captured uh, that it would, uh, you know, it would help one, the people who were there, of course, to reinforce their memories and also two, to help the people who are not there to understand, especially in the broad brush uh, areas like, you know, what you guys were talking about just now. I guess the answer is no, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that anyone took notes. Yeah, it's a good point. Uh, unless other people took perhaps, notes, I didn't take notes. Perhaps, uh, you know, a couple of uh, folks who are leading the discussion could uh, put together something from memory and distribute it. Yeah, yeah, we should do that. Yeah, because it, we, we had really a lot of discussions about, yeah, we, we can probably put together a doc. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea. Okay. Hart or Dave or Arno. I can initiate. We had a lot of discussions about interoperability, if you remember, when we talked about like reusable components. And then we had some more discussions later with, with Mick and Gary, and we talked about like actually where where my proposal was not going well and what else can we do. So maybe I can I can try to summarize and then we can review it. Mm -hmm. Stan, I'm just looking to see anybody else who's uh, there and wanted to come. There, yeah. All right, everybody else wants to remain mum. <laughs> oh. so, so this, uh, there is one comment I would make. I mean, uh, you know, as a follow up to the discussion about the hacking versus talking, we go over this over and over, and I think you know the. The, the point was made that, you know, this is kind of what people wanted, talking. And I think if we want to have more coding instead, maybe we need to have that as a set agenda so that people who come there don't expect anything different. Because... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I... I, I, I... I hear what you're saying, and, and I'm I've been struggling with this because, you know, frankly, I keep thinking to myself, two days really isn't enough, um, because by the second day you're really just sort of getting going, and you you really want to sort of you know keep that momentum, and you know, as as Mick said, you actually or, or or Dan, you know, you actually want to start getting your hands dirty and starting to actually get you know, indie running on fabric or sawtooth or whatever it is. And um, and then you're you're all running to catch a plane. So um, I realize that there's probably also never enough time, right? And that's a reality. Um, and so maybe the thing that we need to do, Brian, I don't know, is think about maybe we have uh, you know a, a day devoted to yakking, and then another day where it's a little bit more yakking and and smaller group, you know, breakouts and so forth that. Um, uh, you know, we tried that, you know, to say the afternoons are for, for hacking, but we still ended up having somebody on stage in almost every breakout period. So, I don't know, we probably no, need Chris, to on that note, uh, just, just to say, I was, so I just came back yesterday from Nashville and, and Brian Bellendorf was there and, and Tracy was there and a few people from Hyperledger were there. And what they had, they had like, it was distributed health. And they talk about, you know, how to use blockchain and technology in, in healthcare and stuff. And yeah. they had a separate session, which was kind of a code camp, where there were four projects. I don't know, it was a Hyperledger uh, Composer, uh, Gem, uh, Quantum, which is an open source kind of uh, uh, implementation on top of the Bitcoin stack that allows like smart contracts. And it ends up with, with block apps. So some of this, I think that some of these events were, were kind of, some of these workshops were sponsored. I was moderating, but what was interesting is actually that crowd was a lot more likely to become a contributor to one of the projects because you saw like all the, you know, the, all the C-suites and all the suits at the healthcare discussion talking about market opportunities. 
But then the code camp really had people that looked into the code, tried to download, play with Git, and it was a very different crowd. And of course, the discussions were very different, right? So maybe it's not going to be a bad idea to separate. If we are trying to look for contributions and people kind of joining the projects on the code level, and then separately to have the business guys kind of getting more aware of what Hyperledger can do and what we already have. It's not a bad idea. I'm just, just saying, I've seen it like this <coughs> this week. Yeah, one thing I was going to suggest was, I mean, there are a lot of new people for Hyperledger, if you will, there that were there to learn about it. And so, mm -hmm. you know, what it competes with, we just want to go and hack on code. Um, so maybe we have, you know, add a third day at the beginning, though. Um, where anyone that's coming in to learn, we get them up to speed, you know, with people explaining what's going on and all, and then they can contribute on the, when the, it's time to go do the coding. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of liking that idea of a day of presentations and status updates and where are we and where are we going kind of, you know, for each of the projects and, and maybe work groups. And then, uh, you know, for, for, for the new people, and then we can focus a little bit more on the, the hacking part of it for, for two days. Yeah. So what about combining some of what, what about yeah. combining some of what Tracy's been doing or requesting with the project reporting pieces of it? So, you know, you do on one day, we just have 15 minute, um, report outs from the projects, um, as part of that. Um, I think that, Again, that sort of provides at least a little bit of an introduction um, to what's going on. It, cause, I mean, there were enough new people there that there's no way we could have just jumped right into just hacking. And you know, the the and, and I know that Brian, that some of this is coming along, but you know, having a YouTube video that's sort of introduction to Sawtooth and Burrow and Fabric and and whatnot, um, you know would would also be a good thing and we can make sure that we advertise that for new people um that sign up or register for a hack fest so that they they have an opportunity to uh to to hear some of that and then they can focus a little bit more on some deeper discussion on actually getting up and running and so forth um Yeah, so um, so I've said this before, but I think a good way to do this would be to have presentations in the morning and then explicitly ban presentations in the afternoon and have that be hacking time or, or something of that variant. I also think one of the issues is that recently we have not had a lot of you know, clear defined hacking goals. Um, for these backfests, like someone says, "Hey, you know, we're going to try to do X at this hackfest." Um, I think that would make hacking a lot more likely to happen if there was some sort of collaborative project that was well defined that people wanted to work on. And, yes, and maybe best. a reality to recognize with that too, though, is you know, if we're going to have something like, like uh, make a Nate want to do something on on an identifier that's maybe two or four people that can participate in that hacking. It's not necessarily yeah. a room of 30 to 50 people that can all be working on the same problem. Yeah, it's a little different than if we were doing a bug squashing day or yeah. something. Um, yeah, exactly. It was uh, supposed uh, by Chris and uh, Brian. We we held some uh, only bug fix hack first. And uh, I, I would like to suggest uh, uh, we let those core developers to sit down inside all those uh, new uh, beginners and uh, to uh, show how they uh, fix those bugs and uh, to help the new beginners learn uh, the projects quickly. Yeah, I was just what writing because you have so many maintainers, it's going to be a lot easier to have like a task or added by crashes or, or a small task or an extension per project that the maintainer can push internally and help the newcomers to feel you know, a sense of accomplishment, right? Within a day or half a day. 
Yeah. I was going to say, you know, about the topic of not having enough time, you know, and having 30 people in a room trying to download images and get all spun up. What if we went into the hack fest with um, sort of preparatory homework? Like, hey, we're going to have a session on indie. Um, the only way this is going to work is if everybody does steps one, two, and three before they come. So, like, you know, go and follow this short tutorial on getting, you know, your image set up and so that you can at least spin up a node. And then when we get there, then we can really dig into let's build a network, we'll deploy some chain code, that kind of thing. Like, it, it seemed to me like we wasted all of our time just trying to get everything downloaded. <laughs> and uh, we didn't really get into the meat of the of the technology. Well, yeah, in terms of hacking, I would I would agree that we spent, you know, many people spent 15 or 20 minutes just downloading code because we had a low internet. Or an hour network. because or an hour because it was an ISO that was 500, you know, 500 <laughs> megabytes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so but yeah, maybe there should be like a standard like do these things to get yourself ready for the hack fest. Um, and then if you didn't do those when you show up, then maybe we can have someone volunteer to say, you know, over in this corner, I'm going to run everybody through the tutorial, you know, that, that um, we sent out, you know, so that you can catch up with everybody else so that the existing sessions aren't overrun by people going, you know, I'm not downloading the image or this step in the tutorial is wrong, you know, Git doesn't yeah. work that way anymore or anything like that, you know, sort of like a, yeah, come up to speed corner. So, you know, we have a little bit of time before the next Hack Fest in um, December. Um, and so I think, Todd, that what we ought to do is we ought to put um, some thought into the next one. And um, I would actually propose that um, if people are willing to have a work group that comes up with ideas about how to improve the hack fest, um, make it a little bit more about hacking than yakking and having, you know, something for noobs. Um, and I'd be happy to lead that. I don't know if we want to call it a work group or a task force, but we have that and we still have to go back to the GitHub stuff, but um, I'd be interested in doing that. Cause again, I think this one was an improvement over the past um uh, but you know we're not there yet so yeah can we ask in the registration uh can we just explicitly whether people are interested in coding or not um because i'm i'm always curious like what percentage of the attendees are as jonathan pointed out you know kind of more business oriented who are interested in seeing what hyperledger is about um, and, and if people don't have a coding background, it's going to be kind of hopeless to get them to hack. Um, so, so I'm curious if we could get some kind of metric as to what percentage of the people showing up were in this category and what, you know, were, were kind of ready to hack. Uh, that might actually find a home in our community survey. Uh, Tracy, I see you're on the call. What do you think about that? I mean, you know, we could do a section of have you attended a Hyperledger meetup? If so, what was your primary interest and checklist? Um, maybe you did cover that already. Yeah, the survey went out already. Um, so it would be, it would have to be a separate thing. Um, I think it makes more sense to do it when people register, just provide the information. Yeah, right. so. Yeah. I agree with Tracy. I think we, you know, the different hackfests might have sort of radically different people. You know, like I would imagine, you know, a hackfest in the Bay Area would probably have a lot more percentage of coders than one in, say, like Washington D.C. But you never know. Um, so, so yeah, I would love to. I would love to see this like a week before the hackfest, so that we could kind of come up with a plan. Uh, All right. Well, I didn't hear a whole lot of people chime in, but I'll at least start a thread on the mailing list and maybe we can get some, some ideas about how to. Chris, I'm happy to participate in that. 
Thanks, Tracy. Yeah. Okay, well, we're out of time. And unfortunately, we didn't hear from Bei Wang on his chain code designer proposal. I would suggest people, again, review that. Let's discuss it on the mailing list. Um, and uh, we'll try again next week. And uh, with that, I think uh, we'll close the call. So thanks, everyone. All right. Yeah. Bye. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Bye. 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 Bye.